Hey, Metal Maniacs, this is Eric from Medieval, and you are cranking it up on Dave Softy's Metal Meltdown on Metal Messiah Radio.
Alrighty, Metal Maniacs, here we go. Please help me welcome to Metal Messiah Radio, hailing from Chilliwack, British Columbia, Canada, from a heavy metalist, medieval, energetic, fast paced, prog infused metal, here to talk about the band's upcoming release, Mirror in the Darkness, due out April 7th, 2023. Joining us, we have bassist and backup vocalist, Eric Wieser. For having me, welcome to the Mental Meltdown, Eric. Thank you for taking the time to be here. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, let's mention the rest of medieval, the rest of the band, the rest of the lineup. Uh, I see you have Leon Collingworth as the vocalist, and uh, Gary Cordzin on lead guitar, Brett Gibbs on rhythm guitar, lead guitar, backing vocals. Yourself, as I mentioned, Eric Wiesa as backup vocals and bass, and your drummer. Chris Malcolmson, and uh, I have checked out your upcoming full offering, Mirror in Darkness, as I mentioned, it's due out April 7th, and I find it to be a, a, a nice, catchy offering, and it, it wants me to learn more about the band, so that's why we're here, so let's learn all we can about Medieval. Now, how did the band get its name? Who selected Medieval as the band's name? Yeah, so that one came from me and Liam. Uh, so we were originally called Demise, but we formed... Um, it's actually been the first and only band I've ever been in. And this is all the way back in like 2011 uh, as a high school band. Um, but when we graduated, me and Liam, we decided, you know, we wanted to keep pursuing the music. But uh, that name was used uh, a lot as pretty generic. So we had to pick a few different names. And uh, one of the ones that came up was Medieval. Um, I think just the name, uh, medieval just gives off like a little bit of like a storytelling feeling, a little, little bit of a fantasy vibe. And it's because of like the lyrics that we wanted to tell had a bit more of a, um, like storytelling. So, um, that's why we chose it. And, um, we, we changed the spelling. So it's com- almost like medieval. Right. Right. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Inspired by Negative. Uh, spell it differently. That's cool. That's a great idea. Because uh, when I first saw the name, I'm saying, Am I, is it me devil? Is it me devil? Or what is it? But when I heard you uh, say it, I'm like, it makes perfect sense. Medieval. Yeah. Uh, I like. I also like the joke, too. That's like we're medium evil, not fully evil. <laughs> that's a good one, right? <laughs> and I see that the band formed in 2014. And uh, this upcoming album is actually your sophomore release. And your debut was released in uh, 2016 called Conductor of Storm. And was that self-released? Yeah, both albums are self-released. I see. And uh, are you searching for a label? or is it? Yeah, we're, we're not really uh, searching. I mean, um, I, I think one of, the, one of the biggest things for us, you know, is, is we want to make sure that if we were to work with a label that we get, comp- like, full ownership of our stuff. Um, we, right. We we take a like copyright stuff uh, pretty seriously, so um, yeah. So getting a label would be nice, but we haven't really, you know, we we have jobs and we kind of self fund it, and um, we're okay doing that because we get to make all the decisions ourselves on what the sound should should be. I hear you. That makes sense. And maybe you know down the road when you get bigger or more popular or just too busy, maybe at that point. A label might work out for you, but if you could do it yourself, you're probably better off. Make yourself more money. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and you know, if it happens, uh, that that'd be awesome. <laughs> right, right. So, how do your tunes all come together? What's the process like? Um, do you have a process as far as who writes the music and who writes the words? Uh, we don't have necessarily something written down in stone of how we have to do things, but um, like the for the first album. Um, a lot of, like half the album was written by me and Liam all the way back in high school. But then, uh, Brett, um, and Gary also, when they joined, they took a big, um, big place in the writing process. Um, often Brett or Gary would come in with a full song, um, recorded. Uh, Brett likes to record, um, also MIDI drums and stuff as well and kind of produces a full layout as a demo. Um, whereas Gary would come up with, um, like a full song of riffs. And we'd all get together um, when, when we get the kind of like the version that they want to show off and just kind of 
pick it apart, you know, rearrange it. I, I put a lot of um, thought into the arrangements of things as well and, um, you know, move things around until we get, and we'll practice them, of course, until we feel like uh, it's it's the kind of like the complete song and, you know, we, we like to trim the fat, I guess. Um, and then the lyrics typically come at the end. So we'll have the full instrumental all demoed out and recorded. And then Liam would go off and get inspired by the music, um, come up with lyrics based on a theme or central theme or concept that he has. Um, and then sometimes if he's got some parts missing or he has a block too, I'll, I'll work with him as well and uh, we'll fill in the gaps on the lyric side. So that's how most of the songs come up. But um, there's also some that are more spontaneous. Like on the second album, there's a song called Bailed that came out of a cabin jam. Um, got really baked and then just started playing some bass riffs and then that formed into that song. That's magical, right? And that Mirror in the Darkness, uh, was this... Uh, do you have like your own studio or could you tell us about the making of this album? Uh, what studio it was recorded in and who was responsible for mixing, mastering and producing? Yes. Um, so we started off recording the drums. Um, we recorded them in uh, Maple Ridge uh, at a place called Turtle Recordings. Um, they have a uh, this guy named Larry Anshell. He's got a really nice studio there. Um, and, you know, drums are the biggest thing that, you know, we didn't have the space to really record drums. So we wanted to go to a studio for that. But um, the rest of the album was actually recorded at home at Brett's place. Um, we did all the bass, guitars and vocals there. And um, so it was it was just me and Brett kind of um, handling the process. We would both be in the room and, you know, we'd take Liam in and record stuff. Um, I think Gary, when he was doing his solos, he actually recorded from his place and would send us the tracks. Um, and uh, yeah, and then we do all the mixing ourselves in um, Ableton Live. Um, we worked with Ken Schellenberg, um, who helped us fill in uh, for a drummer bet between having Ross and our first drummer and then Chris. Um, Ken was helping us out. He actually sent us some orchestral arrangements as well, so um, which he kind of wrote and did did at his place. So, um, but yeah, everything's mixed by me and Brett, and then it was mastered by uh, Jeff Black, who's uh, known for being in the band Gatekeeper. Cool. I hear a little piano in, within the, the the album. Who's who's doing the piano work? Yeah, so um, the piano it depends on the song. So on No Peace and Rest and Mirror in the Darkness, um, the piano on those songs are by Ken. Um, and then on Pray For Me and Veiled, it's got a bit of synth as well, which is kind of like a synth piano. Um, those were recorded by Brett, actually. Huh, that's true. That's cool. So you're pretty much a do-it-yourself band, I take it. Yeah. Do most, yeah, most everything like, Do as much as we can ourselves. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's great. How about the cover art? I find it to be excellent. It fits the name of the album really well, Merit and Darkness. So, who created this CD art, and who also let like, you know who designed your logo? Yeah. So, um, the uh, the album art was um, done by one of my previous coworkers. Uh, it was um, when back when I worked at uh, EA. I'm actually a game developer. Also, as my career. Interesting. Um, and uh, she, uh, her name's Ivana Vas Vasilova, and she's um amazing artist. She she worked with me, and I just knew she was the correct choice for uh, producing this album art. Um, and, you know, we kind of came with her uh, with a mood board, so we just had a bunch of colors and themes and uh, ideas, and then she just kind of took them away for a week and came back and had kind of like a rough sketch um, of what ended up being what you see um in the album art um so yeah she did a great job with that um, really? yeah. and then our logo is done by uh mod black moon um they do a bunch of logos for bands and um we had two logos um the first one was on our first album and then we got the same person to just kind of do like a re rejuvenated version to kind of like uh, uh make it a bit more uh modern what formats will mirror in the darkness be available yeah, so it'll be on CD, so you'll be able to get physical editions of it, as well as uh, digital on all uh, streaming platforms. Um, we're working with CD Baby as well um, as a distributor to get our physical copies uh, on Amazon as well, so that way people all over should be able to get copies, hopefully. 
Excellent. So I, it's very important that we, we give links to the fans. This way they can support Medieval. So I would think that the, probably the best link, you say CD Baby is probably very important, but how about your band camp as well? Let's give that link. Medieval, M-E-D-E-V-I-L dot bandcamp dot com. That's probably like the most important link. And then you have your Facebook, Medieval Band, and you have on your Instagram, Medieval Official. And then you also are available on Spotify, iTunes, and as you mentioned, CD Baby. So I guess you would think that the Bandcamp would be the most important link for the fans to have in order to get either the digital download or, or the CDs. Um, we're we're considering to put the CDs on there as well. Uh, we're just seeing how much how wide the Amazon ones can go, but we'll probably end up putting the CDs on there too. But you can already pre-order the digital one and. Um, You'll get some early tracks before the album comes out as well if you do that. That's interesting. Well, that's a good idea. And what about other merch? What do you currently have available for your fans? Do you have shirts, hoodies, anything like that? Yeah, we got a, a like three variations of T-shirts that we have. Um, we I think we got some like medieval logo water bottles or something that uh, we we hand out sometimes. So we that's just kind of like got them that's made. different. Thanks. Yeah, um, and something we're actually have upcoming, which is I'm really excited about. Um, we're working with a local brewery in Chilliwack to produce uh, a medieval beer, um, which is a hazy pale ale. Nice. Well, they'll come in cans too, uh, which will have the album art and stuff on it as well. So, um, uh, yeah, we're going to be releasing the beer as part of a listening party that we'll have at the end of March. <laughs> Cool, that sounds like fun. And I was uh, checking out your YouTube channel, that's Medieval, M-E-D-E-V-I-L on YouTube. And I noticed you have your official Lilith video, Among Thieves. It's a very cool tune, cool video. I'd like to know if you could tell us who created and edited this video. And as well, beyond that, as far as uh, what possibilities you have for future either official lyric music videos or even live performance videos anything like that in the works yeah so the the among thieves lyric video uh, actually i think it was just uh some some person we found on fiverr i can't remember off the top of my head uh what their name was brett brett found them and then um showed the uh repertoire but i can't yeah i can't remember the username but um yeah they helped out with that and um produced this lyric video and then, um, yeah, we got a couple new songs uh, coming up. Uh, they'll be in the form of visualizers. Um, so, cool. you know, it's kind of like uh, the songs that that will kind of uh, modulate the uh, the images in the background and stuff. Um, but we're also planning some guitar playthroughs of two of our songs as well. We're going to be recording some of those. So you'll see Brett and Gary um, show, kind of like almost doing a demonstration of how the riffs are played on the album. So um, people who are wanting to learn the songs will get some value of that, I'm sure. Oh, that's good. good. I'll keep an eye on that, and we'll, we'll share it. And uh, sharing is caring and all that fun stuff, right? And let's talk about shows. Would you like to talk about any of your past performances? And we could talk about, I noticed you have some shows coming up in uh, March and, and April. Well, I noticed a couple of shows anyway, um, but... Uh, would you like to talk about any of your past performances? I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, we we played some shows. It's been a while since uh, we've been playing live uh, due to COVID and other events that have happened. But um, since uh, since before, we were, we were playing uh, some um, some bigger shows actually. So we opened up for Sepultura before as well, well as Hammerfall and Flotsam and Jetsam, um, which nice. was pretty big deal for us and um, yeah yeah th those kind of came out of the um the vok and metal battle um that we performed um i think one of the prizes uh for like winning one of the one of the rounds or whatever was uh, opening up for sepultura on their 30th anniversary tour so we were just like oh shit like i remember listening to those guys in high school so it was, it was really cool yeah congratulations on that that's great yeah thanks and I see you have, what, is it like a CD release party or you call it an al album listening party in Chilliwack on March 24th at the Flashback Brewery Company? Yep, and that's where you'll uh, be able to pick up your uh, cans of uh, medieval beer as well. Um, nice. It's uh, it's uh, free entry. Um, come in, 
grab a beer uh, with friends and uh, listen to some of the new music and uh, you know the band will be there and I see on April 13th you'll be at the Hyperspace Metal Fest yeah in Vancouver beyond those two shows uh, are you planning on or working on any other uh, live gigs that you'll be performing at yeah well we're um, we're getting some of them on the uh the timeline here we're not sure yet about what's happening with the tour we're hoping to book one but at the same time we're also figuring out some uh lineup adjustments that um uh we have to go kind of go through right now so we're just kind of focusing on uh releasing the album first and then figuring out what what's to do with that tour but um yeah we're getting a bunch of shows hooked up in, in the meantime that's good. It sounds like you have everything lined up very well because the release is going to be April 7th. And uh, so you have everything you know, pretty much ready to go for yourself. So good planning is always helpful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Been planning this for a while. <laughs> That's excellent. And would you like to talk about your bass? Oh, my bass. Ooh, yeah. I mean, I play a, a Fender P bass uh, made in America. And um, I actually got two that I play, uh, one for playing in drop tuning which is we started to do on the the recent album um but yeah i've i've had that since uh what like 20 2015 i've been playing p basses and then um yeah you know inspired by uh you know getty lee and stuff nice very nice and you had mentioned about your career in gaming and uh, you want to talk more about that or would you like to talk about uh, the rest of the band, what they do when they're not doing the band to support the band, or whatever you'd like to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I work at Microsoft now um, at a place called Coalition. Uh, like I said, I'm a game developer, so video games and music are my two passions. Um, so, you know, I do that to make money and then um, fund the, the band through that. And uh, yeah, Gary is a uh, electrician as well, so um i think uh brett uh likes to focus a lot on the music and and he uh gets jobs when he needs to and takes time off uh to write some of the songs as well um and liam works at the uh a kins uh fruit market and uh in chilliwack so yeah we all do various things and pull, pull together all of our stuff to uh to produce these uh these awesome albums. That's good. And uh, at this time, would you like to say anything to the medieval fans that are tuning in? Yeah, I just want to, you know, thank you all for all your patience. I know it's been a long time since uh, 2016, but, uh, you know, I'm super excited to release this album. I think, uh, you know, our goal was to make something better in every possible way from our first album. I think we did it, so uh, it'll be worth the wait. Okay, and I want to thank you for spending time with us tonight on the Mental Meltdown on Mental Messiah Radio. You did a good job, Eric. I, I think we caught everybody up to speed, but I'd like to know if there's anything else that you'd like to mention that we have yet to discuss, please feel free to mention anything that you'd like. Yeah, just uh, w what you mentioned was the Hyperspace Metal, uh, Metal Festival. That'll actually be the first event also where you can pick up the physical editions of Mirror in the Darkness. So come and check us out and I'll see you all in April. Excellent. That's good news. And uh, you know, I wish you the best. Have a uh, great 2023. And um, I hope that we could continue with the interviews with every new release you have. You know that you'll have a home here on Mental Meltdown on Mental Messiah Radio to talk about your music if you would like to do that. Perfect. Yeah, thank you so much, Dave. It was great to be on here. And thank you once again. Let's go crank up some more Medieval, and let's crank it up loud. Hey, Metal Maniacs, this is Medieval. We would just like to wish a happy 15th anniversary to Metal Messiah Radio.